Alright ladies and gentlemen, how are you guys doing tonight? It's Tuesday, October the 27th, 2020. Welcome to another Metallic episode of Music of Destruction. Bringing you guys the very best in metal related content right here on YouTube. If you missed anything in the past week, please click the I in the upper right corner of the screen. Get caught up on all my latest videos. And please subscribe and turn on the bell so you don't miss anything when I post. A new video. Also, if there's anything you would like me to review, drop it down in the comment section below. I do keep track of who's requested what, and I will gladly consider it. No slammer deathcore. Don't enjoy those genres, so no point reviewing them. I do strive to provide value every time you guys click on one of my videos. Welcome to Album Review Tuesdays right here on the channel once again, and I'm really excited for tonight's review. Hope you guys are as well. So tonight, we are going back to 1986. Yes, 80s metal is the fucking greatest era along with a lot of 90s metal. Some metal in the 2000s is quite decent, but tonight, Metal Church, the dark. I mean, how the fuck could you be a metalhead and not have some of these guys in your fucking collection? It doesn't make any goddamn sense. I just got this masterpiece in the mail two weeks ago. Yes, that's right. This is a band that is overlooked a lot of times in the thrash power heavy metal scene, especially when compared against titans like Slayer, Testament, Metallica, Kratom, Sodom, etc. Right? Hell, even Sepultura had albums out in 1986, and this one kind of just got swept under the rug in my opinion. I never could figure out why. I've always fucking loved Metal Church. My dad actually had this on vinyl and he had the self-titled which I did have in my possession at one time but again fire damage water damage destroyed a lot of my collection I've had to basically build my fucking collection from the ground up so it's getting bigger by the way this Saturday night I am gonna go live on YouTube and show you guys my metal collection I was planning on doing that last weekend but Colton and I decided to stream Alien Isolation to my Facebook gaming page if you want to check me out on Facebook gaming it's in space no one can hear you scream However, one thing you ought to know is that Metal Church was formed back in 1980. Now guys, Metal Church are a heavy power thrash metal band that formed in San Francisco back in 80, like I said, by Kurt Vanderhoof and others. Now several members passed through the band's lineup and Lars Ulrich also played with them for a few rehearsals in 1981 before relocating to Los Angeles to form Metallica. So how fucking awesome is that? Now, he is not considered to be one of their official members, which, of course, if you're only there for a few fucking rehearsals, you're not going to really be counted as an official member. And I can understand Metal Church's decision not to say that Lars Ulrich was a big part of the band. Now, this lineup released a demo but swiftly broke up in 1981. Kurt moved back to his hometown of Aberdeen, Washington, and founded a new band called Shrapnel with Craig Wells and Duke Erickson. And for a while, Tom Weber was on the drums. Tom was quickly replaced by Kirk Arrington after the first lineup had recorded their instrumental demo, which is, of course, what they wanted to do, right? Now, after a few unsuccessful vocalist experiences, they founded David Wayne and released the Four Hymns demo in 1982, which I have to hear. Further demo material from just before and just after Wayne was hired was also recorded, though never officially released at the time but was for a time made available for free download after being unearthed over 20 years later, so obviously I gotta check that out. Now in 1983, they decided to change the name of the band from Shrapnel to Metal Church and went on to release their self-titled, self-financed debut album in 1984. The success of the album led to them being signed to Elektra Records for the release of The Dark in 1986. Now, Kirk Vanderhoof left the band at this stage and was replaced for half of a tour by Mark Baker, then by former Metallica roadie John Marshall as a permanent guitarist. Now, the lineup on the dark is as follows. We have Kurt Vanderhoof on guitars, Craig Wells guitars, Kirk Arrington on drums and percussion, Duke Erickson on bass, and Dwayne Wayne, rest in peace, he passed away in 2005 doing the vocals. And, I mean, I had no idea... David Wayne had passed away until a couple years ago. And I mean, why are we losing so many fucking metal legends? The most recent being Eddie Van Halen at the young age of 65. And I'm beginning to wonder about a lot of things surrounding these musicians' deaths in the last 15 years. And I'm starting to wonder, maybe they knew too much about secret societies or, cor or corporate figures or government figures. Were they assassinated? Of course, one thing I know for sure is you cannot put these things past any authoritarian power. 
but I digress. So let's get into the review, shall we, of Metal Church The Dark. I mean, I'm so fucking excited to talk about this album because this is one of the most overlooked metal albums of all time. So this thrash masterpiece opens up with the thunderous heavy thrash metal assault that is ton of bricks and that's exactly what it feels like here because this is a powerful heavy metal thrash attack with a lot of those classic heavy metal elements thrown in. The result is a pulse pounding attack of powerful emotions and conviction and fury that very few bands around this time were able to convey with such passion as Metal Church. That's not to take away from any other bands I mentioned before we started the review here. However, Metal Church combines some of the greatest elements of heavy power and thrash metal into some amazing compositions and memorable tracks and moments that will let you know that Metal Church is not here to fuck around. This is a killer opener. Next up we have Start the Fire, and man, if this isn't a song reminiscent of some of the greatest traditional heavy metal elements, then I don't know what the fuck is. This is epic, powerful, and classic in all senses of the matter, and it's got some amazing melody and hooks, and this one is a little bit slower than Ton of Bricks, but it's still a straight balls to the wall metal song that hits all the right marks and will keep you headbanging and singing along to the lyrics about how oblivious people are in this world and the fact that David is obviously fed up with society as a whole on this album, and I'd imagine throughout their entire discography, but I digress once again, because <clears throat> the guitar work, drums, and bass certainly help to convey these emotions and discontent, and David's vocal range is absolutely incredible on this album as well. His screams and traditional heavy metal yells are so goddamn good, and they fit so fucking well on this album, they sure knew how to choose the right vocalist. This is classic Metal Done Right. Great song here as well. Next up, we have Method to Your Madness. And you know what? This album just keeps getting better and better and keeps fucking delivering. It's a stark, powerful reminder of why I love 80s and 90s metal so goddamn much. Bands just aren't like this anymore, other than the new wave of traditional heavy metal and the new wave of thrash metal, as well as the death and black metal underground. We know how great those bands are within those genres. However, Old school worship applies here, and I fall into this category of old school worship because there's also some really amazing slow melodies that come in on this track with David's softer spoken vocals, of course, that adds a great dynamic and variety to this album. And this track reminds us all that heavy metal is about all of us, united as one, with its pounding guitars, heavy drumming and lyrics all about aggression, frustration, and taking back personal power and overcoming the shit that life throws at us. I mean, this is what metal is for. And instrumentation in this track is absolutely incredible as well. The solo work on this track, amazing, and it also makes this album flow so well and gives everything such a vibrancy. And you could definitely tell this was thought out and planned to the finest detail. It brings the album to life as does the lyrics. I mean, this is a killer fucking track as well. Next up, we have Watch the Children Pray, which opens with a dark keyboard note being sustained with clean guitars that play on with David singing along with a slow-paced drum pattern. And this is easily one of the darkest, moodiest tracks on the album and really reminds me of Iron Maiden meets Metallica in a lot of ways. Actually, this song really reminds me of Welcome Home Sanitarium. Or perhaps Welcome Home Sanitarium reminds me of this song. You could easily put them side by side and you'd know what I'm talking about. But that can be said about the whole album because at the beginning of the 80s, bands had two choices. Either make thrash metal or make power metal. And Metal Church decided to combine these genres and my god, did they ever do a killer fucking job. This is an amazing track with some great deep emotional context and instrumentation that does its intended job here and makes you feel what's being expressed. Absolute masterpiece. Next up we have Over My Dead Body and the power thrash metal attack just keeps unfolding and pounds you harder and harder and gets better and better. This is an instant headbanger that will have you pumped and ready to take on whatever life throws at you that day. This one picks up in its speed and intensity again and it's a thrash metal attack of sonic proportions with some power metal atmosphere thrown in for good measure and makes me want to thrash like a fucking lunatic. This is pure thrashing power metal madness and it is one of the best songs on the album as well as one of the heaviest. Now David's vocals here are astounding once again as they are through most of Metal Church's discography and the instrumentation is on point and played with such powerful precision and perfection 
that this boggles the mind for 1986. Next up we have the title track, The Dark, and this is probably my favorite Metal Church song of all time. It's powerful, it's epic, it's emotional, it's passionate, and it's convicted, and has some of the best instrumentation I've ever heard put to tape. I mean, Jesus Christ, how the hell did metal turn into such a goddamn joke after the 2000s? I really don't know. Of course there are exceptions, but man, the 80s was such a fucking killer time for metal in my opinion. No bands sounded the same, and it was about expression and power, and connecting with like-minded people through your music and vice versa. Now this song combines the best elements of thrash, heavy, and power metal into one sonic skull bashing masterpiece that is definitely one of the most iconic metal songs of all time in my opinion, and you could feel the sheer energy and power in this track all the way down to the core of your fucking soul, at least I can, and it certainly lets you know that this is exactly what Metal Church are all about. So let's listen to The Dark right here on Music of Destruction. Enjoy. And guys, we are back, and yeah, it's fucking killer. Need I say more? Amazing stuff. Next up, we have the track Psycho, and that's exactly what this sounds like. This is even faster than anything that's come before it on the album. It's sonic, it's brutal, it's thrash metal, and it's attack that shows no fucking mercy for its entire duration. Riffs electrify you as they erupt from your speakers, as does the drumming, bass, and of course, David's amazing vocal range that expresses so much anger and passion the double bass work on this track is pulse pounding and skull splitting in its intensity and fury, but so is the riffs and the bass and everything else. This is just so goddamn heavy for 1986 that you could easily place it alongside greats such as Creator, Testament, Sodom, Sepultura, or even Slayer. Yes, I said that because I really believe that this album does not get the recognition it deserves. Well, I'm fucking changing all that. This is an amazing, brutal thrash masterpiece of a song as well. Next up we have Line of Death, and I mean, could this album get any better? I mean, wow, this is a thrash power metal masterpiece at its absolute best from this band. And I honestly believe that The Dark is Metal Church's best fucking album. And it really shows here because what they have managed to execute here is nothing short of astounding on every goddamn level. Lyrics, instrumentation, power and emotion, and the overall message that metal will never fucking die. Line of Death shows us that traditional heavy metal is obviously the most important aspect of the genre if you're going to make metal, and its foundation is critical, because without heavy metal you wouldn't have Black Death, Thrash, Doom, and Sludge, etc. without the bare bones of classic heavy metal. And this album and song definitely lets us know 
that that heavy metal is there, but it also combines with power and thrash in a way that is amazing. It has such an amazing display of knowledge and passion that metal church stand among the elites in metal in my opinion. Another killer track. Next up we have Burial at Sea and the epic power thrash metal continues at full speed once again and doesn't show any signs of slowing down. And once again, I don't know how they could have made a better album than The Dark. However, I do want to get their self-titled from 84 and check out the rest of their discography as well. But to me, this album is something very special and timeless in the power thrash metal genre because the way they combine these two genres is unprecedented with that bare bones backing of classic heavy metal once again. Now you do have some slower paced ballads on here and then you have some absolute balls to the wall thrash metal power epics that make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. This track conveys all of this very effectively and it doesn't derail the album at all when the slower parts come in. This is an amazing track. Closing out this masterpiece is the track Western Alliance and I honestly cannot think of a better way to end this album because everything here fits and there isn't one track on the album that I find myself wanting to skip over at all which is an amazing accomplishment for the band. Because the consistency of this record is so captivating that 42 minutes hardly seems like enough time to experience this album because you're going to want to go back and start it over. I've listened to it five times today before I started the review. Now the different elements that are at play here deliver in every sense of the matter and this track is absolutely no exception. Thrash power metal brutality with the atmosphere of 80s heavy, heavy metal originality that every band should take notes from here from Metal Church, obviously. It's one of the greatest heavy metal albums of all time, one of the greatest heavy metal bands of all time. If you don't have The Dark, why the hell not? The final verdict for Metal Church's The Dark is going to get a 10 out of 10, obviously. This is a must-own for any metalhead. And hey, if you're new, make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell so you don't miss anything. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Music of Destruction. Join the Facebook group for all things metal, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Music of Destruction. The Seed episode 27, The History of Death Metal Part 3, will be up on Patreon tonight. I'm working on that. I was working on that as I started the review. If you'd like to support the channel, patreon.com forward slash Music of Destruction. It's like the $5 tier. For just $1 per month, you'll get shoutouts on my channel as well as considerations about reviewing whatever you'd like me to see. Your support helps keep the channel going and contributes to new equipment like lighting, better cameras, better computer hardware, software, all that great stuff. Thank you very much. Colton James and myself doing our first movie, re movie review very soon for Reviews on the Run. He was here this weekend working on a brand new promo which will be up on the channel right away. I'll be putting that into my videos next week. He's not done. He's got some stuff he wants to finish. But anyway, let's check out a clip of the new channel. I can't think of a thing to say. Fuck it. <laughs> You're a fucking natural. And we are back. Shoutouts. Metal Bench Chronicles, King of Swords, Acid Metal, Backwards Metal. Have yourselves a great night. Subscribe, like, and share this video, and comment. Have an awesome day. We will see you for Album Ranking Wednesdays. Cheers, and stay fucking metal. Bye-bye.